Hey guys, what's going on? It's Michael from Tech Examined, and today is Thursday, March 20th, so that means it's time for another Tech on the Tees. So the stories that we'll be covering today, Twitter turns 8 years old, Flappy Birds is coming back, oh boy. and Oppo drops a huge bomb on the mobile market. So, let's get started. <laughs> So Twitter turns 8 today. Uh, do you use Twitter at all? Do you remember what your first tweet was? Well, you know what? There are a couple different sites out there, but the one that I use today is first-tweet.com, and it's actually pretty cool because you can check out what your first tweet was. Now, I've checked this out before, and I've done it before, and uh, I remember what my first tweet was, and we'll go over that in a minute. But uh, let's show you some of the other people's tweets out there uh, in the tech community because you can look up other people too. So this is pretty cool. With a rousing tweet on January 27, 2009, my brother from another mother, Mr. Double D 50 tweeted, I'm sick and feel like a bunch of crap. I just developed a hacking cough. Nice first tweet. Jonathan over at TLD tweeted, MacBook Air Pro coming tomorrow? And I think a link to the video? Marquez Brownlee, Mr. MKBHD, 1 million subs, did first tweet, April 8, 2009. Mr. John Fourlakers tweeted on July 30, 2008, just set this bad boy up. Still not sure what it does. Austin Evans with a simple hello world on the 4th of December, 2010. Mr. Soldier Knows Best on October 6, 2008. That's fairly early. Test, test. Chris Perillo did it way back on February 7, 2007. I've been twitter pated. On the 5th of January, 2009, Mr. Detroit Borg trying out Twitter for the first time. <laughs> Unbox therapy? Mmm, fresh Twitter. On March 2011. And then, of course, yours truly on February 6, 2009, uh, just about a month and a half after I started YouTube, just got my element case here at work! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. It took me a few minutes to figure out what it was. Unboxing tonight on YouTube. Wow, what a lame first tweet. Some of those are actually pretty neat. Now, other sites like MySpace, which started in 2003, was really only popular till you know, 2010 when it started really crashing. And, you know, Facebook, well, I found it in 2004, uh, hit its 10-year anniversary back in February, and uh, still arguably is one of the biggest uh, social sites out there. Um, now, they recently jumped in 2013 uh, from a private company to a publicly traded company. And they seem to flourish after a little bit of a slow start. Now, the same thing goes with Twitter. They also went from a privately owned company to a publicly traded company uh, late 2013. So with the unstable lifespan of these social market networks, it'll be real interesting to see exactly what goes on, what comes up that's new. There certainly are other ones out there. Uh, that have tried to come up and they're just kind of neander along and are trying to to make that market their own you know little place in the in the world offering different uh, things such as typing uh, you know taking pictures doing video and stuff like that now Twitter remains to be my favorite source of communicating I mean obviously I do the YouTube videos and stuff like that but I really like the idea it's short and sweet uh, you know there are ways to tweet longer. Uh, where you can add on stuff or you just end up tweeting more than once and doing continue type of deal. Uh, I think it's simple. Uh, I love the third party apps. Uh, I use Tweetbot, which is pretty kick ass. Uh, Facebook, you're kind of stuck with the one app, and I always have problems with it. So that's kind of the way I kind of shy away from it. Now, I do use it for our tech site and stuff like that, and I do have a personal one, but Twitter is my favorite, and I will continue to use it until something else comes along. So, Flappy Bird is coming back. Are you surprised? Uh, this according to the 28-year-old creator that pulled the game back in February because he claimed he was getting too much press for it. Well, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I guess the lack of ad revenue kind of changed his mind on uh, you know all the attention that he gets. Because he's going to get more attention now. And actually, if you listen closely... Can you hear that? That's the sound of the people that supposedly paid... All that money on eBay to buy a device that had Flappy Birds on it. Wah, wah. <laughs> now, I still have it on my phone. Uh, I don't play it anymore, and now that it's available in the store again, I'll probably just delete it to make the room. But, uh, you know, I was never really good at it to begin with. Now, on to probably the biggest story of the past couple days. Oppo dropped a huge bomb on the mobile phone industry uh, Tuesday night while we were all sleeping. 
They introduced not one, but two new smartphones. Uh, the next generation, the Find 7 and 7A, were announced on Wednesday in Beijing, China, again, while we were all sleeping. Now, the specs for the Find 7 are going to be a 2.3 gigahertz Snapdragon 801 processor, 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, a 3,000 milliamp removable battery, and a 5.5 inch 2560 by 1440 display. Pretty sweet looking. Oh, and the PPI? Let's let Dom from Mac Mixing tell you what it is. 538 PPI. Yes, 538 PPI. That is happening. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? This is going to be going for $599 off contract. So that is actually pretty sweet. I believe it comes out like in May or June or something like that. But we're definitely going to try to get our hands on it. So the specs for its little brother, the 7A, which are fairly close. And uh, this is a little more affordable. We got a 2.3 gigahertz Snapdragon 800 processor as opposed to the 801. Only 2 gigs of RAM, which is still pretty sweet. 16 gigs of storage. And a 2800 milliamp removable battery as well as the same 5.5 inch screen but only at 1080p which I'm sure will look just as good. Now this will also be going for a $499 off contract which is another great price for this phone so it's not too bad. Now one of the things that bothers me most is the fact that uh, it's coming out with Jelly Bean 4.3. Now I know it's not that big of a deal but you know with the fragmentation that continues to go on with Android I just think the newest phone should have the latest and greatest but I'm sure it'll get updated, but it's just sad to know that KitKat's been out for six months already. Along with a ton of features that this has, one thing I did want to mention to you guys, that this is actually going to have a really cool feature on the camera. Not only does it have a 5 megapixel front-facing camera, but it's going to have an f-stop 13 megapixel rear-facing camera with the Sony sensor on it, capable of shooting a 50 megapixel shot. How do they do that? Well, there's a process called PureView 2.0, which actually creates a super zoom that takes the 13 megapixel and actually converts it to a 50 megapixel shot. And it's actually pretty neat. It takes 10 consecutive shots and then takes the four best out of that and then combines them all together. Now, how is that going to look? Well, actually, Engadget got a hands-on on this when it was announced, and it looks pretty cool. It'll be interesting to see how other people use it and how it turns out. And, uh, you know, it'll be a pretty neat feature. Now, also, the rear-facing camera does shoot in 4K video. Now, it remains to be seen if it does have the image uh, stabilization on that. I would love to get my hands on one of these. I might have to buy one and uh, fork out the money. So, it'll be interesting to see uh, how both of these operate when they do finally come out. But, uh, it's definitely a potential winner in my book. Of course, I don't want to forget... I want to thank Dom over at Mac Mixing for allowing me to use his footage today. Please be sure to check out his complete video right here of all the coverage for the Oppo Find 7 and 7A. Alright guys, so that's it. Those are the three stories that I found interesting the past couple days. Uh, if you enjoy this content, please be sure to hit that like button as it does tell me uh, what you're looking for or what you're not looking for. And uh, of course, if you want to catch our next video, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Again, your support is extremely appreciated. As I go through in my head, it feels like I'm saying this like a robot, but I really do appreciate it, and uh, I, I in, am extremely excited about all the response we've been getting on the videos recently. And uh, we got a ton more stuff up. I got it all set up right behind the camera right there. And uh, that is it for me, guys. You all have a great afternoon. Be sure to check out our previous video right there, and I'll see you in the next one. You guys take it easy. See ya!